Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Church. I'm the Reverend Tiffany Sapp, the minister of this church, and my pronouns are she and her. I am so glad to be with you all here today. Thank you for being with us as we celebrate the wisdom of the natural world and the way that we can learn from all of our surroundings, the trees, the birds, the flowers, the critters, and the creepy crawlies are all part of our beloved community. If you are visiting for the first time, you are especially welcome. Our greeters by the welcome table can help you get oriented if you have any questions. If you have any little ones, our greeters can show you the way to the nursery, which is available during the service for children ages six and younger. Please be aware that our services are filmed and posted on YouTube, and there's a chance that you might be seen in our YouTube video. If you wanna make sure that you are not on camera, please sit in the perfume-free zone over here or in the section closest to the back table in the library. Today, we are looking at the sixth source of Unitarian Universalism. That is a bit of a tongue twister, the sixth source. Spiritual teachings of Earth-centered traditions which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. One of the ways that we experience those rhythms of nature is in the turning of the seasons. For that reason, our opening hymn is number 73 in the thicker gray hymnal, Chant for the Seasons. We will sing all four verses as they bring us through the entire seasonal experience. Please rise with us in body or spirit for hymn 73.
Good morning, all. Uh, I'm Beth, and I'm your service leader today. And I've been hanging around this dynamic community for probably longer than some of you have been on the earth. So glad to see you all. Welcome you. Because today is about learning from the wisdom of Earth-centered spiritualities, we begin by acknowledging the importance of the land that our community is built upon and the complexities of this land's history. We gather on the traditional land of the Uchi people and the Cherokee Nation, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded and live in relationship with it throughout countless generations. We also gather on land with a history of slavery and with a history of liberation from slavery. And we commit to working with this land in the spirit of its liberation during the time that we gather upon it. We also gather around our chalice, a symbol of our shared history as Unitarian Universalists. Here in this community, we connect the lighting of our chalice with the words of our vision statement, which reminds us of who we want to be together. Please say the words of our vision statement with me, which are printed in your bulletin as we light the chalice together. We work together as a church to transform ourselves, our community, and our world by sharing love, pursuing justice, and seeking wonder. As we are in a space that is already sacred, we invite some of our Earth-centered Unitarian Universalists to call us into this time of worship. From the east come the spring winds, full of hope and new beginnings. These fresh breezes blow through our minds and invite us to see the possibilities that scatter and fly and come back to the earth to take root like dandelion seeds. Welcome, east and air. Welcome, east and air. <coughs> From the south comes the summer heat where dreams become reality through blood, sweat, and tears. Our energy, our passions, our sense of justice rise like the noonday sun. Welcome, south and fire. Welcome, south and fire. From the west come the fall rains, cleansing, nurturing, and gathering. The persistence of deep emotions that flow like the rivers create new pathways. The colors of sunsets and autumn leaves call us to transformation. Welcome west and water. Welcome west and water. From the north comes the winter cold, inviting the wisdom of stillness and contemplation into our lives. The mountains surround us and hold us and tell us we are home inviting us to peace and rest. Welcome, North and Earth. Welcome, North and Earth. Looking above, we see our highest aspirations and reach for them. We gather, seeking the best parts of ourselves, our worth and dignity, justice and compassion, our desire to grow, our search for truth, our democratic process, the beloved community, our interconnectedness, May we rise to our aspirations and be the best we can be. Welcome above. Welcome Looking below, we acknowledge the foundation that supports us, and we know we will never be done growing. We offer acceptance to our leading edges, and in doing so, we can see more clearly how our functioning in the world affects our surroundings. May we have the grace to build community through acceptance and growth. Welcome below. Welcome below. Looking within, we celebrate the synergy, the coming together of east and west, north and south, of above and below. We know that we are not either or, but both and in our outlook. Thoughtful and emotional, grounded and fiery, aspirational and self-accepting. May we find the power of our unity to be greater than the sum of its parts. Welcome, Center. Welcome, Center. 
With gratitude, we celebrate that we are not on this journey alone, but walking side by side with our ancestors. They have taught us so much, yet they bid us to grow beyond them. Ancestors, we ask your presence and power amongst us today, that we celebrate you and guide us. Welcome, ancestors. Welcome, ancestors. Please sit with us in silence. We'd like to invite our children, youth, parents, and young at heart to join us down in front for a time, of, time for all ages. Good morning. Good morning. It's amazing to see you guys down here today, all of you. So uh, today we have a story about a goddess and a god. A lot of times in religions that are connected to the earth, there are many gods and many goddesses. And stories about them explain things about the planet that we live on, and sometimes even the people who live here on this planet. And those stories are called myths. And this is one of them. Once upon a time, in the springtime of the world, Ancient people told stories about a young god and a young goddess. The stories say they helped form the mountains and the rivers. They painted the sunrise and hung stars in the sky. They sang the animals into existence and planted seeds all over the earth. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, hi. Fine, just thanks. I'm just planting some seeds, gonna see what grows. So uh, do you have a name or can I just call you mine? <laughs> oh my, me? Did you really just say that? Does that actually work on anybody? I mean, you are talking to me. You're incorrigible. Come on, I'll give you an apple. Well, I guess I'll let you help me out with these seeds. And as time went by, they grew closer and fell in love. And the people of the earth loved this goddess and this god, her regal beauty and his trickster ways. And the people told even more stories about them. And in the telling of these stories, the goddess and the god became even more real, even more powerful in the minds of the people. Now, darling, don't forget to turn up the thermostat on the sun today. It will be summer any day now. Yes, dear. Did you say the Bluebirds made a new nest today? Oh, how exciting! I'll stop by and visit Miss Bluebird right after I check on the salamanders over at Buffalo Mountain. These two lived happy and in partnership for ages upon ages. But then, gradually at first, and then more and more, there were humans who didn't want to tell stories about the goddess anymore. They still told stories about the god, but the stories had to change because what was once a partnership was now a solo act. And slowly, people began to forget about the goddess. Guess it's time to warm up the sun again. Oh yeah, there's more baby birds. Oh, is it with the baby birds? Hey God. What? Are you doing okay? You don't sound especially happy. Well, no, 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 I'm fine, just busy, busy. I don't have time to talk to you. I think he misses his girlfriend, y'all. <laughs> Over time, the god got grumpier and grumpier and forgot the goddess completely, and her story was only told in whispers by a few.
but those whispers were enough to keep her alive. And one day in May, when she was feeling especially empowered by the blooming of the flowers, she decided she needed to do something about this situation. Hey, how you doing? Huh? I don't have time to talk. Busy God here. Don't you remember me? What are you talking about? We were once friends. How could you forget me? We were once partners. We used to care for the earth together. It looks like things aren't going too well in that department either. Won't you let me help you? Can't we play together once again? It's you, it's really you. Oh, I miss you so much. Are, are you back? I am, and it looks like we've got some work to do. These rivers need some cleaning, and oh my, all this plastic, it's just gotta go. We need to plant some more trees along the edges of the desert, and who left the thermostat turn up on the sun? Come on, honey, we've got work to do. I, I don't think we can do it alone anymore. Oh, we could never do it alone before either. Children, will you help us take care of the earth? What do y'all say? Do you want to help take care of the earth? Let's all say yes. Yes! yes. <laughs> and from that point forward, people began discovering the stories of the goddess and making some new ones too. And they recommitted themselves to helping care for the earth and the god never forgot about his goddess again. I won't let him forget. <laughs> yes, dear. Say, say it again, Doug. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, kids, hold on. So I have heard, oh, thank you to our goddess and God. You all can go ahead and sit down. <laughs> So um, I found out that our special music today is actually some songs that are made to teach children about living in harmony with the earth. So I thought that if y'all wanted to, I would come down here and sit with you all and we could stay right here for our music. How's that sound to y'all? Ta-da! Grocery list, seen here. <laughs> um, so as some of you know, I have had the incredible honor of going through some teacher trainings uh, in the last month, two different ones. Um, the first one was a teacher training uh, for forest schools. Uh, some of you know what forest schools are. It is a school constructed completely in the outdoors, typically off the grid completely, um, where the teachers aren't teaching a curriculum, they are simply guiding the children as they learn and explore uh, through resilience and Mother Earth and nature. And the second school uh, was a Junior Appalachian Musicians training course um, where we went really in depth with um, Appalachian roots music. So this forest school song is all about connecting with the earth. I will repeat it several, several times. It does not, the melody does not alter throughout, um, so sing along as you see fit. So we'll start with our feet apart, get nice and grounded into the earth. We do a lot, we do this song a lot in opening circles to center ourselves when we first get together for the day. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down. My trunk stands strong, strong in the wood. My trunk stands strong, strong in the wood. My wound stands strong, strong in the wind. My trunk stands strong. My branches reach 
Reach toward the sky, my branches reach. Reach toward the sky, my branches reach. Reach toward the sky, my branches reach. My branches reach. Reach toward the sky, my branches reach. Reach toward the sky, my branches reach. Reach toward the sky, my branches reach. I hope you're standing up nice and tall now. My leaves, they turn, turn to the sun. My leaves, they turn, turn to the sun. My leaves, they turn, turn to the sun. My leaves, they turn again. My leaves, they turn, turn to the sun. My leaves, they turn, turn into the sun. My leaves, they turn, turn into the sun. My leaves, they turn. My fruit I give, give from the heart. I fruit I give, give from the heart. My fruit I give, Give from the heart, my fruit I give. My fruit I give, give from the heart, my fruit I give. Give from the heart, my fruit I give. Give from the heart, my fruit I give. My seeds, they sprout, sprout new life. My seeds, they sprout, sprout new life. My seeds, they sprout, sprout new life. My seeds, they sprout. We're going to sing it one more time. And whatever your seeds look like to you, that's how I'd like for you to move. Maybe it's coming from your head. Maybe they're coming from your arms. Maybe they're coming from your knees. Here we go. My seeds, they sprout, sprout new life. My seeds, they sprout, sprout new life. My seeds, they sprout, sprout new life. My seeds, they sprout. Back to my roots. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down. One more time, real loud. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down, down into the ground. My roots go down. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I love all you beautiful trees. This week and every week, we return to the knowledge that whatever else is happening in our community and in the world, there are those among us celebrating their greatest joys and their deepest sorrows. Our commitment to community and showing up for each other means that we set aside this time every week for celebrating our joys and holding our sorrows no matter whatever else is going on. If you want to shine a light on your journey, you can share a joy or a sorrow in person by using these candle cards that are located at the back table. And if you'd like to share a joy or a concern from a distance, you can email me at minister at hvuuc.org. A great big joy for all of us, as many of us got a chance to enjoy an absolutely lovely coffee house last night with the music of Andrew McKnight. A huge thank you to Karis and the music committee uh, for making it happen, and a huge thank you to the men's group Macho for their Macho Nachos. <laughs> a joy for me and my United Methodist friends, this week the United Methodist General Conference voted to lift their ban on gay clergy. Even 
though it has been two decades since I've been a United Methodist, this move still means a great deal to me, and I'm glad I could celebrate it with you all here today, um, especially since a couple of you all have shared that joy with me as well this week. A, uh, a joy that James's senior recital is tonight. It's at the Martin Center at 7.30 p.m. He has worked so hard. We are so proud of him. Congratulations on all your hard work, James. That is 7.30 tonight at the Martin Center. A sorry for, uh, a sorrow for Wendy Hurl. Um, her father passed away this week. She wanted me to share with you all that they were able to reconcile before his passing. She was able to be with him and with the rest of the family when he passed. It really is. And a sorrow uh, from Raj Mehta. Um, dear HVUUC friends, Sharmi's beloved brother-in-law, Sudhir Desai, died two days ago after a valiant fight with cancer that occurred um, seven years ago. Um, basic He's basically been fighting this since 1986, actually. He is survived by his sister, Saraj, daughters, Manali and Seema in the UK, and three grandchildren, twins, Leon and Maya, and Alexander Milan. Saraj will leave India for the UK with Seema in one week or so. We love Sudhir deeply, wonderful man. Sharmi introduced her sister initially to Sudhir. And so that is from Raj, who the longtime members of our congregation will know. <coughs> a concern card from Nikki. Please say a prayer for Doug's mom, Sue, and his family. Sue is currently at a rehab facility. We aren't sure what's going on. Doug is planning to visit her Monday. There is a lot going on, and he's trying really hard to stay strong, and has stayed strong with us today. Um, we both have sick parents, so this is hard for both of us. We appreciate all the love and support we receive from you and everyone at HVUUC. And some very joyful news. I know we've got a lot going on in our community this week, but it's all worth hearing. Um, I am pleased to announce that Harvey Isaac Finch was born to friend of the church Kaya Hoffman this Friday. Mother and child are both doing well, and let me tell y'all, he is cute as a button. If you want to sign up for a meal train, the sign-up sheets are on the back table. Joy's holding them right now. Uh, they live in Bristol, and they are vegetarian, so we especially need your help with this one. And those are our joys and sorrows for today. I am so grateful that we have so much happening in our community and that we can support each other in it all. We bring everything we are, all that we carry to this joy of this table of joy and sorrow, grief and hope, community and care. If you wish to light your own candle, please approach the side of the table that is closest to you and the closer candle keeper will assist you. Please light candles at the back of the table first so that no one has to reach over an open flame. And if you wish for us to light a candle for you, please just raise your hand until I acknowledge you and I will light a candle for you. And our community is so much larger than just those who are in the building this morning, so we light a candle to hold space for those who are not physically present with us, but are ever in our hearts.
final candle for all that remains unspoken in our hearts and minds. There is a song beneath the soil. Ten million million voices raise their call in no human language. Life flows through the tangle of roots, mycelium, microbiota, and crawling, burrowing, tunneling life. The song flows upward through the trunks and stems and blades of tender grasses and races out into the air. It's picked up and carried on no human tongues. It's in the footfall of paw and hoof. It hums in the buzz of wings and the fluttering of feathers. It shines on scales and fins and slithering skins. And if we are quiet and pay attention, sometimes we remember that we are part of this song as well. and We have notes to sing. The Anthropocene is an experiment. What happens when we humans forget that the life around us is part 
of us, that these lives have no less inherent worth and dignity. How many singers of the earth song will go silent forever? Today, we are charged to remember, to know that as we live together in community, we are also in community with the silently singing lives in the vast congregation of the earth as well. The interdependent web of existence is no allegory. It is as real as the heart beating within our chests. We are charged to do what we can to help those who cannot advocate with human language, who cannot scream for help when they are suffering. We have a role to play in softening the blow of the age of humans. We have a voice that can help to shape the world to come. We are so charged in the name of the sacred song, the tapestry of life of which we are a part. Let us remember and then act. Today, we are charged to remember, to know that we live together in community. We are also in community with the silently singing lives in the vast congregation of the earth as well. The interdependent web of existence is no allegory. It is as real as the heart beating within our chests. While the earth-centered spiritualities that our sixth source point to teaches us many things, I believe that one of their best pieces of wisdom is that they point us to these silently singing lives in the vast congregation of the earth. They remind us that there is life that matters everywhere and that they are our teachers. Teachers under our feet and flying through the sky. Teachers napping on our couches at home right now, whether they're technically allowed to be or not. <laughs> teachers growing in the garden outside the entrance of our building. What wisdom have you learned from the earth and the abundant life that she has seeded all around us this spring. Pets are easiest because we share so much of our lives with them, but the birds at the bird feeder and the plants in the garden and even the weather are fairly accessible. So I want to hear from you all right now. Can you put a lesson that you learned from an animal or a plant or a weather or a, the mountains themselves into a sentence or a word that you could speak out and share with us in this moment? Beautiful. Beautiful. There is beauty everywhere. Absolutely. Resilience, Resilience healing, perspective, perspective. Exuberance. exuberance, that joy. We are all connected. The power of anticipation. I think I heard abundance. Take a nap when you need to. Y'all, we are apex predators. We are supposed to spend a lot of time laying around. It's the truth. Tell, tell your boss your minister said so. I'm sure that will go over real well. What, any other lessons we want to share? Tolerance, community. community play, love, spiritual, love, renewal. spiritual renewal, persistence, persistence. Asking, for asking for help. So many things that you said sparked something in me, but when I heard persistence, I thought about this dandelion that is growing in the cracks of my driveway, and it, I, I could have picked it, I could have gotten rid of it, but it's beautiful and it like worked really hard to get there. And <laughs> I think I'm just gonna leave it for a while. The bees, the bees need it, they absolutely do. So just this morning, I got to witness a communication session between my corgi and a flock of turkeys that had invaded our backyard. <laughs> I didn't even know it was happening at first because my dog barks all the time. But when I heard the barks and I heard a chorus of gobble, gobble, gobble after he barked, I was like, there's something happening in my backyard right now. 
and they didn't appreciate me coming out to check it out. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what I learned, except that both parties seem to be excellent communicators and that they seem to come to some sort of understanding. And definitely one of my lessons here was that not everything's about me. Um, although I did make it about me by coming and sharing it with you all today. Because <laughs> humans totally do that, don't we? But. These two parties, they were doing just fine without my involvement. One of the things that I really love about the diverse spiritual paths that fall under the category of Earth-centered is that all of them decenter the human experience. We are still here, but as part of an ecosystem. We have a role, and often an important one, because of the power that we have to influence life on Earth, but it is just one role. The interconnected web of all existence is so much bigger than we are. And this sort of humility, enfolded in the arms of something bigger than us, can be a blessing. And it's one of the common threads that Earth-centered earth spirituality share. Because there are many Earth-centered spiritualities, not just one. There are ancient and beautiful indigenous spiritualities scattered throughout the world. Some have even opened up their wisdom and practices to outsiders, believing that spreading their knowledge to others is the best way to save the world. Other indigenous paths have been wiped out before they had a chance to share their wisdom with us. And still others have kept their practices closed, trying to preserve their traditions from a colonial mindset that feels entitled to own anything shiny that interests them. As a, descender, as a descendant of colonizers, I am grateful for the first, grieve deeply for the second, and completely understand and respect the mindset of the third. There's also many neo-pagan paths, paths that have roots in European indigenous traditions that had to evolve when Christianity came to dominate Europe. When they re-emerged from the shadows with the lifting of the witchcraft bands in England, they had been transformed. When they came over to the United States and began to rub elbows with the hippie movements, they transformed some more. But in their transformations, they gifted us with an empowered feminist point of view and an ecological consciousness that we very much needed. And there are ways of connecting with Earth-centered spirituality that aren't under either of these very large umbrellas of practice. Personal practices of being renewed by nature in the garden, on the hiking trail, sitting on the porch, watching the bird feeder, and paths like religious naturalism and atheopaganism that find deep meaning in the natural wisdom of the world without giving up their skeptical atheist perspective. There are a lot of ways of being Earth-centered, and what they all have in common is that we humans are not the center of the world. Which is where the sixth source enters Unitarian Universalist history. I've shared with you all before, a few years ago, that the principles and the sources that we have today are not the same as the list that was created in 1961 when the Unitarian and Universalist movements merged to create Unitarian Universalism. In 1977, Lucille Shuck Longview authored a Women and Religion resolution that passed at General Assembly. That resolution called for an intensive examination of, quote, the sexism inherent in religious literature and institutions, beginning with the Unitarian Universalist Association itself. In 1985, eight years after this work began, the principles and purposes we know today were passed by General Assembly, complete with more gender expansive language and the addition of the seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of which we are all a part. 
the sixth source that we are exploring today would be added as a culmination of this work an entire decade later in 1995. For Unitarian Universalists, feminism and the care for the earth have always been intertwined, just as they are in the neo-pagan movements from whence this awareness emerged. I wonder why it took so long to add this sixth source explicitly, and my best guess is probably that it's hard to clarify how these earth-centered traditions don't fall under the world religions category of the third source. And I think that's fair. This list approach is often going to carry weird overlaps and omissions with it, but that's the subject of next Sunday's sermon. I think that to understand we need this source, we need to focus on the why of this source. It says, celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. It seems to me that in our search for truth and meaning, that awareness of this sacred circle of life and where we stand in it has a lot to offer all of us, whether we personally connect with indigenous spirituality or neo-pagan movements or not. This sacred circle of life and the rhythms of nature don't require us to believe in anything unseen. You can put your hands into the soil and know that within it grows the things that we need to live. We can think about how when we return to the earth by putting our bodies in the ground or releasing ash into the air, that the building blocks of our body will be recycled to support even more life. These temporary lives are infused with meaning, at least in part because matter is not created or destroyed. It just becomes something new. You can drink a glass of water and know that as it hydrates your body, it hydrated many bodies before you too and will hydrate many bodies after you as well. You can watch a creek rush down the mountainside, taking that path of least resistance, and know that the blood vessels in your veins mirror it. You can escape to the beach with your friend and float in the ocean and know that you were once held in the waters of your mother's womb with similar support. You can sit around the fire at night with your friends and marvel at how we are all made up of energy. That when we clap together or sing or walk or run, that a million energetic reactions make that possible. And that somehow, when we do it together, it feels bigger than when we do it alone. Like we become a bonfire together instead of a single flickering flame. And when life feels a little challenging, we can go outside and listen to the wind blow through the trees and feel it on our faces and take deep, slow breaths, letting the oxygen give our very physical bodies so much of what they need to keep going, feeling our blood pressure and our heart rate decrease as we just keep on breathing knowing that peace is right here in our bodies when we give ourselves some slow, deep breaths and a little time to let it settle in. And the wisdom of the rhythms of nature <coughs> remind us that there is a time for every season, that there are times of dreaming and planting in the spring, times of growth and play in the summer, times of harvest, both literal and metaphorical in the fall, and times of rest and reflection in the winter. Divorcing ourselves from these natural rhythms, feeling like we are eternally moving onward and upward instead of living circularly is destroying ourselves and this beautiful world that we are a part of. 
We are going to work and harvest ourselves right out of this gift of life if we're not careful. There's no doubt that the earth will survive, but my preference is that we survive too. And to do that, I think we need to reconnect with these rhythms that invite us to awe and wonder, that remind us to rest, that encourage us to let go of things sometimes, that invite us to be grateful for what we have rather than always grasping and stockpiling more. I will be the very first to admit that I'm not really capable of giving you an analysis of what environmental policy should be. There are probably people in these chairs today who can. It ain't me. That's not my job. My job is to remind us why we should care and to maybe suggest an ethical or spiritual framework for that caring. And for me, an actual relationship with this great, wide, mysterious, dangerous, ever-changing earth is a great way to do that. How you build that relationship is entirely up to you. After all, there is, are as many different relationships as there are people in this world. Love is like that. But I think that the simplest instructions are the ones given to us by a woman who had the most poetic relationship with the earth that I have ever witnessed, Mary Oliver. And she said, pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. So here's your homework for this week. If you wish to have it, totally optional. Spend some time outside. Leave your phone at home or leave it firmly in your pocket. Bring your sense of childlike wonder with you. Look around, listen, see what the wisdom of your surroundings might offer you and let that practice lead you to grow in your care for this miraculous planet we find ourselves living on. You might even want to do it on the walking trail out here. It's been beautifully maintained and lovingly crafted, and it is open 24-7. You don't need a key or an alarm code. You can just come out here and enjoy our walking trail. And I just might see you out there. With gratitude, we thank our ancestors who have brought us this far. We thank the center of our spirit, which brings all that we are together in unity. We thank the foundation below us that offers us unconditional support. We thank the ideals above us that draw us to our best selves. We thank the earth for its love and the water for its transformation, the fire for its power, and the air for its joy. We thank the chalice for its constant presence a beam of hope and light and we extinguish it knowing that the flame burns on within each of us our closing hymn is number 1007 there's a river flowing through my soul it's in the thinner teal hymn book this is also when we collect the offering that supports special coffee house concerts women's nights fellowships cups gatherings, movies, screenings, DEI workshops, Sunday morning worship, and all the stuff and infrastructure that makes this church happen. Thank you for contributing to our growing community. Please rise with us then, in body or spirit, for our closing hymn number 1007, There's a River Flowing Through My Soul.
generosity this week and every week. May justice lead us to the calling of this moment. May wonder meet us right where we're at. May we discover our collaborators and our companions, and may love guide us on our journey of transformation. Blessed be, amen, and go in peace. Down into the ground, my roots go down, down into the ground, my roots go down. One more time, real loud. My roots go down, down into the ground, my roots go down, down into the ground, my roots go down, down into the ground, my roots go down. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I love all you beautiful trees. <laughs>